in September 2020, we sold our house in the UK, then moved to Normandy in France, where we bought an ancient French farmhouse with various outbuildings, including an old barn, a small cottage with two woodlands, and three and a half acres of pastured land in a beautiful national park area. Follow us on our journey as Budo and I renovate the farmhouse, manage our land and take on many projects for you to enjoy. Let the fun begin. Bonjour everyone, hope you're all well. Welcome back to Caravan Corner. Welcome to Caravan Corner. Ah oh dear, so it's been a... Lots, bit of, lots going on. Bit, lot, <laughs> lots, yeah, lots going on, but... Uh, I was in England for a week, so we haven't had a couple of videos, well, a couple of weeks of videos. Yeah. Um, I was in England for a week, and then when we came back, we had our patrons coming over to to stay in their camper van in our, on the land. Our Bertha and Jup. Our Bertha and Jup, and they was going to help us out for the week, but we had the whole week Awful. of rain every day. And it rained nearly the whole day. Our daughter came as well, Chloe, and her three children, so I managed to sort of escape didn't i we went to burger king with the kids then we took them to this big park we had to actually bring a towel with us to wipe all the seats and then yeah. it started pouring down with rain so, so but it's, it's it been... was cozy weren't it because there was eight of us in this caravan so it's been a bit hectic. eating and <laughs> it was very but um you know i, I just want to say as well a big thank you to alberta and jub because they yeah. bought us some absolutely lovely gifts which i will be doing a post on so thank you so much yeah um so we've <clears> been uh, in this video this week you're going to see us doing uh, me doing some lime mixes different types of lime hydrated uh making quick uh, qu uh, uh quick lime to make up putties and then uh direct hot lime mixing as well to sand which you'll see and then towards the end, you'll see uh, me doing a bit of parging in for a nice fleur de lis. Which looks uh, Tracy's been busy. Yeah, on... I've been busy. Um, you, well, you'll get a tour of the potager, but it looks a lot different from last time we showed it on um, it YouTube. It, everything is just, it's like it's growing on steroids. And I've been harvesting as well, which you'll get to see that. Also, <clears throat> hip hip hooray, I've finished the ceiling now in the front room, salon. Huh? but it was very difficult for me to film because obviously we've got things in the room and to get down keep moving the camera so that's a job done also i've pointed um just down the side of where the porch is so either side on the outside and inside which meets the wall um i've pointed that which that was a job that was on my list to do because obviously i'm the pointing queen um and i think what else have i been doing just been busy busy doing bits yeah and busy and yeah you know, doing lots. Up and that. but uh we are <clears throat> now going forward so i just want to make a little thing about uh we've had a few people asking us you know well they're missing us we don't add videos and such uh we we make a video virtually every week for you guys sometimes two, two a week we have been doing uh, but it does use a lot of time for us mm -hmm. we've we've done an analyze of it all and uh like i say before it's about seven or eight eight nine hours maybe depends on the video um, and when you put that in times and days and hours it actually uses up uh, around about 45 days of your year just making videos mm -hmm. okay uh, it does it, it sounds a lot there because it's the year but uh, so what while we've got s low subscriber counts because we have got a lot we're, we're on about 7,000 or something like that uh, we are on 7,000 mm -hmm. and while, while we're on that amount uh we're gonna just try and do a video when as and when we can for you guys because it takes you away yeah even though we, we thoroughly enjoy doing the videos um and sharing you know Definitely. everything we do the only thing is because there's only us two unless our son comes over and he helps or when there's only two of you you're trying to get on with the renovation but you're also thinking about doing the right thing for youtube even though you yeah. are documenting your life every day whether you go out visiting sightseeing whatever it's difficult isn't it and it pulls you away from the jobs that are important are i hand. think yeah um, 
So don't get us wrong, we love doing the YouTube and we love doing the videos and we will continue to do the videos, but yeah. you just won't have one every single week. Might be every two or uh, three weeks. Some weeks you might have one, two every week for a couple of weeks and then some not. That's yeah. how it's going to work for now. Until our subscriber count goes up and we can make it more worthwhile for us, benefiting us as well, you see. Because at the moment it doesn't benefit us at all, does it? But we have a good following now and people with lovely remarks and Comments. we're interacting with you guys and uh you know it, it, it that makes it worth it yeah. in a way but we want to we want to build our subscriber account now i'm just going to say one other thing we looked on the analytics again this week which we've been doing the last few about a month or so now we've just mm. studied it a little bit and uh nearly 50 percent of the people watching us that haven't subscribed no you know you watch us and you just it's just pushing a button subscribe and you don't pay for it it's free and you're, you're you're building up our channel and the more people subscribe the bigger our channel gets the more videos we'll make and what's important as well to um share the video to like it um and also to put the notification on as well yeah. so you because what happens is when a youtuber makes a video um, the video will come up on your anyone's home page and you say oh they, they're making a video tonight so all you have to do is click the notification bell and then the video yeah. will come and like up it when like it's ready. if you like it that's yes, it. I understand yeah, that's that you know if, you, yeah. if you're not sure and if oh, that was all right it was mm. too long-winded or whatever you don't have to like it but it'd be nice if you do because it helps our channel yeah and but the got... most important is subscribing yeah. we need you to subscribe and with all the rain we've had because the week before I mean, I was doing the potager and I was like a drowned rat. I mean, my feet were muddy. I could, just got drenched, because, but it had to be done. It's a job that had to be done. But um, yesterday we woke up, um, we heard this crumbling noise and we didn't know what it was. Yeah. And the wall, as you drive into the farmhouse, the building, the, I think we... Where the gates are it, when you yeah. come in with the car, the... Yeah, which is a corner of the walls collapsed down. Yeah, so that's it's got a bit dangerous. Down now, so obviously we have that's just another job. So we could get a car out, so I had to move all the stones. Oh god! Anyway, so, so it's, it's another job. Just added another to job the list. we don't entail, no. and uh, it's part of this journey. You know, yeah. we we're not we're not whinging about it. We're just we're not getting on with it. Not going to whinge that the falls the walls the, falling yeah, down. Yeah, but the part we want to talk about is we, we need you to subscribe. Yeah. To build a channel and make it worthwhile for the people that are doing the chat, uh, the video in, you have to subscribe, yeah. and and that and that. Uh, that is the only way our channel will grow. It grows. It's growing so slowly at the moment that it's coming to a stage where we're nearly saying, "Oh, we're giving up." But we don't want to do that because it's a slow going, process, right? unfortunately, isn't it? It's but anyway, slow. on the good note, that's, yep. uh, we've been busy. We've caught up. There's going to be some good bits in this video. I'm sure you're going to learn a few things about lime. Yeah. Um, and watch when we do the uh, parging bit. I'm sure you're going to enjoy that and look at. Tracy's potage now. She's taken over now. So. Well, I've done all. I know you've done the bases and that. But I just I've, built the framework for you to get on with it. Yeah, though, but I? I've actually done laid five of the the cardboard, all the soil, the lime, yeah, the lot of work. soil. You've done so a lot of work. It's a lot of work. So lot, see. Yeah, unfortunately, the you don't get to see so yeah. but the, it does look beautiful. It does look wonderful. Anyway, guys, we're, we're we're off now because um just quickly um, don't forget to get bought... some stuff on oh it. yes <laughs> if you look um the mozzies attacked you attacked one there me. one there one there <laughs> Thanks. so it's not i don't i'm not going for an you know audition what it is? you don't eat enough garlic no anyway garlic every day. <laughs> anyway we need beautiful. to go because yes. you're okay lovely. fun weekend everyone and we'll see you on the next one see you on the next one enjoy the video bye okay folks do you remember this this was the handle i took off that old trowel from last week um, I've smoothed it down, flattened it off at the bottom and what I'm doing is I'm making these I've got some old pipe here uh, this was a length of pipe, it's just a lightweight pipe um, and I've cut off some well, I'm going to make some tooling out of it Okay, so I've cut these at 45 degrees I've got two, I've got a left and a right um, and then what, what I'm going to get is another one of these handles when I can find one and then what I'm going to do is weld that onto there, okay? And that becomes a tool for doing beading, which I'll show you at another stage. But I um, just wanted to show you what I was up to with this. So I'm now going to weld this onto here. I won't show it because uh, this camera, well, I don't think it'll handle the brightness. Um, I don't want to ruin the, the sensor in it. But anyway, so that's going to be welded on there. Then when I find another handle, I'm going to weld one onto there. And then when I find another handle, I'm going to weld one onto there. 
so I can make some different tools for plastering. Probably only use them once or twice in my life, but it's just improvising, you know, with old stuff. I mean, that cost pennies, that old trowel. This was a bit of old pipe laying around. That tool might cost me about five pence when it's made with the uh, welding stick, which is one of these. Okay, so I'm gonna get that welded up and then I'll uh, get ready to do some uh, pargeting soon. Okay, welcome back. Um, so I've finished making the tool and this is the tool I wanted to make. Basically, it makes a bead. So when you put a straight line and you follow this, it'll put a bead into the plaster like that yeah basically and because that's mitered it can go right into a mitered corner and then the back side is mitered so you can go back and come back this way okay but now i'm making another tool so this is it here now i've drawn it out looks like a paintbrush handle okay it's a bit of oak and then i've made some uh some hard heavy metal heavy gauge fencing metal um and they're going to go in inside to get drilled in and glued and what that makes is a scratch tool so I can scratch the plaster work between coats so I can get a good key but uh, I'll make this up and then I'll show you it when it's finished so there we go didn't take long five ten minutes cut it out on the bandsaw quickly then then on this uh, bobbin sander just went round it chamfered them with the hand plane made some tight holes, tiny dab of glue on each one and then knock them wires in and that makes me a scratch tool so I can scratch the plaster work between coats so that's that tool ready that's that tool ready and that's that tool I bought a long time ago but that's for uh, plaster work as well so I've got the main tools I need and then obviously my trowel and hawk to put it on there we go Simples. Bonjour everyone, um, we're here today with Budo and he's going to be giving us an in-depth explanation about lime and also about the tools that you use as well. Okay, and I'll be doing, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to be plastering the lards, alright? So, putty, uh, lime. There's lots of lime, there's a, lot, there's a few different versions of lime, so you've got uh, quick lime, slate lime, uh, uh, natural hydraulic lime, non-hydraulic limes, hydrated lime. And they all they all do slightly different things. So uh, first of all, I'll go over the tools that I, I would generally use here. So I have my trowel, a hawk, that's to put it onto. This is a float to float finish off. A couple of little hand trowels just to get into corners and such. My new uh, Little, implement uh, a scratch tool that I made because I had one I had a plastic one years for years and I lost it when we moved here but uh, I've got a new one I've made up now and then extra things you'd need is uh, you obviously a, a heavy duty bucket like this to mix up you don't really need that but if if you are mixing uh, a quick lime uh, which is a hot lime yeah then you would need a bucket that's substantial enough that it won't melt basically you need some water your tubs um, and then these are uh, these are fibers that I use I don't generally use this stuff right it's just that I've got it and I'm going to use it up is that but, instead of horse hair is yeah it, or uh, don't? normally I use main horse hair yeah. or maybe you might use pig hair um, or goat bristle goat hair pig bristle sorry so you know they're the sort of things you could use and you can buy them readily enough from um, proper um, questions well you can get them from them but you can also get them from conservation people mm. that are building places that make their lion putties and all that sort of stuff but because i've got it i'm going to use it and, and the f thing is is inside the lime all this is doing is holding it together yeah okay and i'll have a little gauging bucket and there we go so today what i'm going to be doing is is i'm going to be using a lime putty on there let me which, just show them, hang on, what you're doing. Yep. So on them so large, so which I'll show you in a minute, we'll go up there in a minute. Um, I'm going to be doing a lime putty on them, right? But I'm going to go in depth a little bit and 
tell you because I worked with conservation and these were the guy the guys that would use this stuff because I'm not a plasterer but I do it as we had to do necessity mm. on jobs um, but this is the old way of doing things basically so a line you... putty is it comes from a uh, you, you basically what you do is you get a quick lime which is the lime that gets hot you let it cool down and that becomes a so you've gone from a uh, uh, carbon uh, let me just think what it's called now uh, hydroxide hydroxide is when it's hydrated oxide is when it's um, it's before it gets hydrated if you like and it, it becomes a hydroxide and that carbonate hydroxide uh, or calcium hydroxide would become a, uh, a dried powder form or as a putty wet putty right so a wet putty is you put that into water you mix it up and then you let it stand for two or three months and the longer you leave it the better it gets basically because it's got little particles in it and them little particles need to absorb the moisture um, and it has to be under water when it's in the bucket and I explained that in one of my videos before um, now that lime is a more traditional type of lime, lime putty. And that would have been used in old buildings like this building or many old buildings all around the world uh, because that was the way it was done. And how that works is that that uh, dries by the air. So it carbonates basically. So it, it, it's, it's uh, more permeable, it's, uh, it is softer, but it's more permeable and it's more breathable than say an NHL 3.5. Which is a natural hydraulic lime. Um, now, them limes were used and designed for setting in water or with water. So, when you put water into it, within two or three days, that plus that lime is set, right? And after that time, you can't really use it again. It's very difficult to get it back, but you can. But it's, it's difficult, and you don't need to do that process. So, I see a lot of YouTubers, and they just use 3.5 for everything, and it's not meant for that okay it's not meant to be used for everything it was meant to be a quicker drying line for certain circumstances especially around water areas uh, say the low half of a building maybe around the chimneys roofing structures um, but you can get away with pointing with it but there's no point of pointing with it inside it's just outside if you need to do it but the best way and the ultimate way is with a lime putty and the lime putty mix I will be using will be the lime putty I'll just uh, I'll show you one so you might have to come over here Trace what's this hydrated lime well no it's, it comes from a hydrated lime a hydrated lime means it's a uh, it's 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 been it's made as a quick lime and it's a powder okay and as soon as you add water to that it starts to heat reaction yeah right but if you only add a little bit of water to that what happens is the reaction starts but it it, it, uh, it dries itself out and it comes hydrated so it stays inert in that way it doesn't go to a, a fully wet mix yeah so then you can bag it and powder it and make it sell it and that's what you would sell as a hydrated lime but if you add the full amount of water in it and it does the thermic reaction it gets hot and blah blah blah, blah bubbles up that is the best of all limes because that lime when it's hot and it's mixed with sand at the same time and it's all mixed together is the most stickiest lime that bonds to anything yeah which is brilliant anyway this is what you'll get now i have stirred this up this morning but you can see there's a light film of water on top of that but basically it's a putty i've mixed it up yeah it doesn't come like it goes like a hard putty but because i've given it a good mix this morning because i want to use this this is my mix of lime okay then what i do in this mix it will be one of this in a gauge right to half of this so this is calcium so is that your bucket there you you're going to use as a gauge, gauge the small yeah, bucket. Be my gauge right, on the floor. Okay. Um, so this one now is calcium carbonate uh, i'll open it and this is what i use to make the chalk, chalk paint. paint right which i showed you a long yeah. time ago didn't i <laughs> remember yep um, but basically when you buy your annie sloan chalk paints and that it's made with this Okay, this is a much finer, technically it's a lime, right, but it's a chalk, it's basically a chalk, it's what your chalk boards are made of, uh, your talcum powders, yes. all your things are made from this, okay, um, and that, what that does is, 
that lightens up the plaster it makes the plaster lighter mm. uh, thing so you can mix this pure with lime and just have that as a mix and that would be done on ceilings or you know big areas that are upside you where you're upside down and um, you're working up above you and you want heavy a mass of plaster to stay on the ceiling you'd use a lighter mix yeah. and that would be pure this half or uh, maybe no possibly three of this to one of the putty right okay okay to get your mixes up and then your hair in there and you use a lot more fibers and hairs to hold that up there that makes but, sense though doesn't it but really? that, that's yeah. how the old way's yeah. done it and also by mixing in this into your plaster mix or your lime mixes you get that lovely smooth finish at the end you get a very uh like a a modern plaster finish you know that thistle finish yeah. if you like or whatever they call it um you get that that texture but it's a much lighter and it's much more permeable and the tree the key to all this is the permeability okay now so what i would do is i'd mix one part quick uh, sorry one part putty line half of this because all i'm doing is adding i'm actually using sand on this one um and why I, are you using sand because it's external right okay uh it's on a vertical as well rather than a horizontal so it's going up so the weight doesn't really matter they're in a lot of weight here anyway um but what that does is it gives it a, a lot more durability strength in the future right okay, okay. so longevity you're doing yeah. it yeah so what we want to try and do is with in the conservation world they want to try and put lime on uh as a uh, as a compound that goes with old buildings but they don't want it to just put any lime i mean you couldn't use nhl for, uh 3.5 for this to a plaster because everything would shrink and crack and yeah. it would all pull together and it wouldn't work properly so what we're trying to do is, is slow that process down and by putting fibers in it putting a bit of chalk in there using a lime putty uh, as the mix then using a good quality sand which is very important you need to select your sand properly which i know about and i've got um but then there's other things we add to that okay uh one of them being urine okay now you're all gonna go Ugh! but that's men's how urine <laughs> so you could use men men's urine is better it's got more nitrates but um not that we're any better i'm just saying <laughs> you know but um the thing with uh urine what it does is it it gives a uh, it gives it gives permeability which i need to re i need to put that into counteract something else that i'm putting in i'll tell you in a minute um it gives that permeability and it gives it uh, uh more strength as well and it, and it and it and it sets up a little bit different the the structure of it all sets up so the urine going into it helps okay it's an old way of doing things they knew how to do things in the old days but they've lost them ideas right and this is what i've been striving for all my life with woodwork and old things is to get the old ways back okay because the old ways that are still standing will be standing long after i'm gone where the new ways mm. is all rubbish most of it and it just is gone within a 100 years the whole lot but anyway so why i put the urine in is that reason and the other reason is is i'm putting this product here there's nothing technical about this okay what's that don't know if you know what it is it's not lard is it yeah yeah you hit the button straight on there right <laughs> basically it's beef, we used to cook tallow. with lard yeah it's called tallow right and it is a lard right you could go and get your household lard if you can buy it anywhere i can't see it in france but mm. this is tallow i think you can still in england i'm sure you i think can. you get it from yeah, but i just don't probably. know what it's called we, yeah where we it need is, to find out in england we call it tallow americans would know it as tallow yeah the canadians and the uh aussie australians aussie australians sorry aussie australians i've not heard of that one new zealanders tallow is a beef fat which is rendered down and it's the finer finer grade and then you get it the reason this goes in right it gives much more weatherability so basically it's becoming like a lubricant in the the mix but it's also uh uh giving you more uh water beading you know so if the water hits it for yeah. the rain it beads off a little bit easier because of this but because it's a natural product it still gives breathability so you're still you're not counteracting and by you putting the urine in that mm. counteracts that slightly but gives it still the the the, the water ability i know it's getting a little bit technical for some people but i'm just trying to and show this you is the old why way. as well like obviously i know this from you telling me but um 
you can't people don't actually understand you cannot mix lime and concrete because concrete is not breathable no, stuff. yeah where lime is and it's people gypsum, just but, don't uh, yeah it's an, uh, uh, not gypsum it's um it's a gyps gypsum 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 uh based yeah. product uh cement um so cements are good for what they do right they're very good when they're working in concrete things like that mm -hmm. but in buildings and old buildings anything that's uh, you know 50 years or older really or maybe a bit longer really you want to be using limes to get away from cement because cement was forced onto the industry a long time ago uh just another money making issue didn't need to do it many bricklayers i speak to now and uh stonemasons are turning back to limes again yeah. because they're more uh, easier to use, more durable, more flexible. They last longer. They're repairable, which is the key. Uh, if you think of cement, when it goes hot off, it goes rock hard, and it normally goes harder than the substrate it's on. Like yeah. say, if it's on a soft brick or medium bricks, stonework that's soft, uh, you can never use it on things like uh, limestones or sandstones because it just degrades them. It stays hard. The water doesn't come out it stays in the stone and it starts to blow the stone out and this is something that gets a bit technical but i just want to go over the basics for you without getting into it too yeah. deep because there's many many mixes i know of and these are just uh, some of them uh, and this is one i want to give to you guys so you can experiment and try with and you'll see the beauty of it and you get that iridescent that nice glow in the night of the lime and it's just beautiful right and we'll go on to eventually talking about a lime wash, lime paint. There is a slight difference, okay? Um, but going back to this, so I mix the tallow, I mix the urine, I mix the fibres, I mix the uh, lime putty and a little bit of uh, calcium ca uh, carbonate for the chalk into there. Um, the technical names, I suppose, is the lime putty would be lime hydroxide, uh, or, or no, um, calcium hydroxide and uh, before that it's, it's calcium oxide before it's made hot uh, and that's probably it for this so I'm just going to show you now I'm going to pop up here and show you what I do with the lars in prep so we'll just cut you off a second and I'll get up there right okay we're back I'm up here now so this is the part I'm going to be plastering we call these larves they're made of oak um, and what happens is, is when I push the plaster into it with the trowel, I don't push it over hard, too hard. I push it in enough that it goes through all these gaps and it wraps itself around the back of them. And that becomes the key to holding it on, okay? Now, in the real world, wood will always move, shrink, swell, okay? So that's why we have the plaster set up like that so it can allow that to do that. It can flex a little bit with the wood to a degree. I mean, this will crack us sometimes until we get it stabilized with the lime washes. But the main thing about this is before I start the process, for the last two days, Tracy will tell you, I've been soaking these, this timber, okay? I want this as wet as I can get it. Okay, this is very important that we keep this wet. I've been doing this for two days now. While I've been doing other jobs, just pop out and keep in spraying this down and getting that, that uh, oak wet. Because what I want that to do is, is when that plaster hits it, I want it to absorb it, pull in the moisture, pull in the lime and make an addition, a key to it. And you're doing both sides? Both sides. Yeah, internal and external. Yeah, well, that's why I just went around there before yeah. I came up. I actually sprayed the other side. Yep, just so people know if so they so did. So people know. But I spray it all out, but you can't always do that. If it was a wall or stud work in the old days, they wouldn't be able to do that. They wouldn't be able to go around the back. I can here, I'm lucky. And that helps me get this saturated. And there, uh, so that now is ready for me to mix up this mix. And then I can plaster this up. It'll take me literally 10 minutes or so to plaster that. Okay. And then I'll scratch it off and leave that coat dry. And then what I would do then is, I'll just hang a little dust sheet, an old wet dust sheet or a bit of hessian over the top of this for a week. I was just going to ask how yeah. long. I'm going to leave it for a week because I'm, I'm doing other jobs for a week and I'm away for a few days. So I'll do all that. Um, so is that generally, you would do the first coat yeah. and leave I mean, it for a week? If you watch the master plasters, plasters, good plasters, there's some brilliant fellas out there, especially in England. Um, and 
you know, the old ways, they're doing the old ways, they'll, they won't touch this for a week or so, at least, maybe even longer. And they'll let that, they'll, they'll, they'll put the first cut on, scratch it and leave it. They'll come back a week, two weeks later. It's not that they're being lazy or anything. No. What they're doing is, is letting that dry slowly. And that drape that's in front of it will be sprayed with water regularly. Yeah. Or kept to keep wet. it moist, yeah. And it lets it, it lets the plaster dry slowly so it doesn't have shock. It doesn't shock it and it pulls it all in and dries quickly. Anyway, guys, that's basically that in a nutshell. So the next time you'll see me is me putting it on maybe or finishing it and scratch coating it, alright? I'm gonna get that on with that in a minute. Okay, welcome folks. Gonna show you a process now. If you was making up a lime wash, uh, even a lime paint, and then it goes on, it moves on to a uh, lime uh, putty, okay? You start with your water and you add your lime to it, okay? Um, when you initially, when I'm starting to add the lime, which is a quick lime, which we're slaking to make this, this process, um, it will be drowning the lime, but eventually the lime will come round and it will overtake and you'll see the thermic reaction. But first of all, if you was making this say a uh, lime wash and you wanted to put a pigment or a colour, a natural earth colour in there, you'd be adding it now before you put anything in. So you'd be putting that in first. So whether that was two colours mixed together or whatever in there. I've got a second bag ready here. Uh, I've, got, I've got a knife to open it if I need to. I'm hoping I've got enough in this bag to get the reaction I need. Um, right, I'm making this up because I want to make up a uh, lime putties for the next two or three months coming forwards. I've got enough to do this wall over here on the porch, but I still want to make some more up so I'm ready, always ahead of myself. Okay, so you'll see the process. So I'm going to start putting this in now. Okay, and it's going to be a bit of a... And that should start to react soon. Slowly, slowly. The moment it's drowned it out, okay? There'll be a reaction coming soon. Stir it up a little bit. Okay. So what we're working to at the moment is a lime wash. Just try not to spill it. It's a bit of a slow process, but it does go there. At the moment it's still drowned it out, but we're just going to keep adding until we get enough to get a reaction. You start to see the steam coming off it. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's bubbling away. I feel it getting hot. Get it well mixed in. I can feel the heat coming off that already. Okay, keep going. Okay, that's, I don't know if you can see that, but that's the reaction we want. 
there. Okay. And that's your quick line being slaked. Okay, look at that, look at the mass of that now. It's If I put my hand in there, it's like putting it in a boiling kettle. So we went from the lime wash to that, which will make the lime putty when this cools down, all right? So I'm gonna just turn you off now. So I need to get a little bit more water just to cool that down a little bit. Since I turned you off, it's been about four minutes, okay? And you can see this has gone like a putty already, okay? But it's still hot. And that's the consistency we're looking at. But this is this uh, mix is the real sticky stuff. And that's what I was talking about earlier, how this is really sticky. When you put the sand in it, it really sticks and adheres to things. This is the ultimate way to do lime work. So the other way I showed you was with a hydrated, uh, high, let's get the word in right now, calcium hydroxide lime. What we did there, what they do there is they add a little bit of water to to the lime just enough that it stays dry but it doesn't bind together and then they bag it where this one has gone straight from quick lime to slaked lime instantaneously it got really hot uh, 100 degrees or whatever i couldn't even i wouldn't even be able to touch that now on my hands but i couldn't definitely when it was reaction was going on that would have scalded my hand down to the bone right Anyway, so this will be hot for a little while now, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to nurse this with a little bit of water going into it. Uh, not a lot, each time I'm just sort of like dribbling it in, mixing it about, until I get the consistency I'm looking for. Probably be better with a little trowel. Because um, once it gets this sticky, it's getting it gets hard on your arms, so you want little bits at a time. But um, I'll, I'll just do a little bit to show you what I'm trying to get to. You can see the, the, the smoothness you get, the lovely colour. But that's the sort of consistency I'm getting to want to get the whole lot to. And when it's cold, I then put that in this bucket where we were using the water, this one here. Okay. And then on top of it, about that deep, I will add water. So this will be submerged in water and it will come above it about that much. And what that does that preserves that because this is going off by carbonation. This is going off by air. It's not the water I've added to it, it's the air that carbonates it and makes it. If I left the piece of this out, and I might actually do that for you, leave a piece out for about a week, it'll be solid back to limestone again. And we're gonna reverse that. We're gonna, we're gonna keep it underwater. Um, and you could come back to this in two, three years time, even longer, and it'll still be pliable and you just mix a bit of water in it and you're away again and this job would have been a lovely job in the winter if you was like say with the romans when they were doing it at the time i think they favored doing this job uh mixing lime together because when it gets hot you keep warm you're around it it's lovely and warm it's like a radiator you know you can feel the heat but anyway i wanted to show you that so i'm going to let this cool down i'm just going to mix it up a bit more let it cool down put it in the bucket and then that's ready <laughs> Uh, to become lime putty, a uh, lime putty it will come eventually, and we want it to mature now. This is a lime putty technically, oh, it's quite hot, but we want it to become a matured lime putty. And when we say matured, what we mean is inside the lime is tiny little uh, particles of uh, lime bits, hard bits. And they have to absorb that water and it takes a long time for it to get through and once it gets through they get soft and malleable and then you can really play around with this you could do a lot of stuff stucco work or lots and lots of decorating work you can make your corner scene things like that as well so this is what i'm going to go so i'm going to start working i'm going to turn you off i'm going to start working on this get this ready to go in the bucket and then i can store it away uh, for two or three months and then we've got another lot well i'm actually going to do another one of these as well straight after so anyway i thought i'd show you that you might be interested I'm just making up a second batch, but I've made it a little bit slower so you can understand it. So this is red hot again. This has got enough lime in here, but it's not enough that it overwhelms the water. 
it's still done its thermic reaction it's gone hot and it's bubbled up but you can see it's a lot thicker uh, no sorry it's a lot thinner sorry I've got that wrong a lot thinner it's more like a consistency of a thick cream okay now I'd add a little bit more water to this and then what I'll do is I'll just leave that and let that let that settle I don't, uh, you know just to go cold if you like as soon as it's cold I then sieve that through a sieve and then I'd make that into a, a paint so you can make it into a lime paint which is a little bit thicker than a lime wash basically so when it goes on look you'll see the bits in it at the moment because it has to be um, let me get a nice bit for you okay so you get that consistency of a paint look it's nearly there and it covers really well but all the little dots and that you see in there would be sieved out so it come as a paint and that's just to speed up your lime washing process so you could put two coats of this on and that's enough yeah uh, if you do a thin lime wash which would be thinner than this then you might have to put four coats on so this is this is this is what you're we're at here this is red hot you can see the smoke coming off it i can feel it on my hand it's warm but i'm going to take this up another level again and just get it up to uh the other consistency of the last one i made which is over there in the bucket at the moment and then i'm going to fill up a new bucket so i've got two lots made for two or three months time when i'm doing some other work uh because the other buckets i've got in the house that i made uh are going to be i think i'll make them back in may was it may april or may anyway so they're going to be uh they're going to be ready to use on the porch the other ones then i've got these replacing that but look at that see that's getting thicker that would be a little bit too thick for paint now so i would probably add a bit of water to that and then i'll let it cool like i said and sieve it but these are the beautiful things you can do with lime limes and using the right limes but i will say one thing to everyone if you're going to play around or experiment with anything like this it's not like your nhl3 safe run of the mill uh natural hydraulic limes this is a um, hydraulic lime this is a lime that gets hot and can be dangerous you don't want to get it in your face or in your eyes and you want to work know how to work with it and then you need to do know to need to know the process of what to do with it after okay so look at that now that, that's getting thicker and thicker so i now need another scoop in there and then this is done which i'm going to do right now before it goes too cold up all the water you'll see that start to bubble in a minute there we go I have to get my hands out of the way because it's quite hot I don't know if you can hear that see the steam coming off it it's like a kettle boiling you know you can't put your hand on it now give that a little bit more mixing you can see how thick that's gone already let me get my glove on <laughs> Should have my gloves on but i wanted to show you in this video a process of a couple of processes with lime we use and was used uh, in the old days uh, the medieval people the romans even back to the romans who had known all about these sort of well they were the ones of it really um, they knew how to use it they knew where to use it they knew what to add to it whether it's porcelain or uh, pots of land sorry or uh, brick dust or whatever there's loads and loads of different re recipes there you go that's becoming a putty again now okay so i'm going to let that just cool down a little bit might add some more water to that now and that's another lime putty ready for the tub and uh well next time you'll see it is when i start to apply it well not this one but the ones i've already done
Bonjour Budo, what are you up to today? Come in a bit closer, I'll show you. So, what I'm doing today is I'm doing another lime. So you've seen in this video a couple of limes before. So we've done a, a hydrated lime, uh, which we turned into uh, a putty mix. Then we did a, uh, a slaking lime, uh, which we turned into a putty. So the first mix was for the uh, with the horse hair and the uh, well, uh, well the fibres I should say synthetic weren't mix. they? This mix I'm doing now, which you've seen before, which I've done before, is what we call a hot lime mix with the sand direct. Okay, and you're going to see the uh, uh, reaction not as violent as the uh, just the putty mix I was making up, but you know you'll see what it is. And this mix here is going to have no fibres in it, and this is for me to start the last coat up on the top there so I can get a nice smooth coat and then I can start to build up the pargeting which is a pargeting you'll have to look it up but it's bringing it's bringing relief forwards you know to make a design it's not a thing I do it's just a it's just something to have a go at and play with and you'll see some details that will come along with, with, with making this as well okay so let's start with this and remember I should be wearing goggles and a mask but me being me so I'm going to put some water in now, okay, just going to let that sit for a minute. In a minute that will start to react. Can I just come a little bit closer? Yeah, can you hear it yep. pop, pop in there? You won't, you won't see, see such a violent reaction as like last time. I can see the All little right. bubbles in the centre. But you'll see the steam coming off it. See that? Yeah. So start to steam yeah. up and puff. I'm going to stand back a bit in case it puffs up. It's because it's consuming the water now. Okay. So what you'd ordinarily do is you'd cover this over. Right. I'm going to put a bit more water in that though. So you wouldn't try and mix it or blend it all in, would you? Or not yet. No. I'll cover it over. Okay. And I'm just going to let that do its thing, get hot, right? It'll be hot for about 15 minutes or so, that wasp, um, or 20 minutes even maybe. But I'm just going to leave that work its magic. Then what I'll do is I'll mix it up. And what, what happens is this mix is the ultimate. For me, I'd rather use this than any, any other type of lime mix, all right? It's lovely and sticky. It's the natural way. It's the original way of doing things. So you're, um, you're getting a, a lime. Uh, let's just see what it's called. It's called a calcium oxide. You're mixing the water in with the sand. It becomes calcium hydroxide again. I told you all that earlier. But this time it's with the sand directly. As opposed to the last ones I showed you two weeks or just over two weeks ago because I've been in England for a, over a week. And we've had a whole week of rain. We had two of our... Uh, Tell me about it. <laughs> uh, ...patrons come over to stay with us in their caravan. They stayed on the land, but we literally done nothing because it was pouring down for five or six days constantly. And we had our daughter and grandchildren as well. And, so and one, top, top top, one stage, there was eight of us in the caravan. Oh, bad, yeah. But, <laughs> but anyway. But it was fun. It was fun. So uh, now we're back on to doing things, okay? So this morning I put some trim around the top of the inside of the, uh, around, underneath the slate. So if you look directly under the slate, you'll see a moulded trim, yep. which we painted the slate colour just to give that roof a definition of a, a heavier, thicker roof. Coming back here. Right, let me just take a look at that, yeah, look that's at it. all right. Is it steam enough? I don't know if they'll be able to. Yeah, they should up. see that. You can see the white powder trying to pop through because it's drying itself out, but it's very hot. And this bucket I have is a specialist bucket uh, for taking hot uh, materials in. So it's not like a normal one of these. Normal uh, truck, is it? No. Rubbish, you think, yeah. Right. Coming back to this, I don't know if you remember, you've seen it earlier in the video. This was the hydrated lime mixed, which to go off has to carbonate. Okay, and I said to you, if I put it in a bag, you watch, it will stay pliable. Non -set. Yeah, pliable. and it has, it stayed non set. That's been two and a half weeks in there. The one on the, this is the same stuff I put on there, this was the leftover, and that's gone rock hard. You can knock it, dum dum we kept it moist kept it moist and the rain kept it moist for a couple of week a week or so anyway but that's now set rock hard 
and that isn't and that's what I'm trying to I'm trying to get to you to let you know is this sets off with carbonation to the air the NHL 3.5 sets off with water so if you put it in the bag it will still go hard okay not straight away but over a bit of time it will because NHL 3.5 has impurities in it and it's really for working around water okay watered areas that where you need to use it so stuff. I have a question for you so obviously you're going to be using this on the front of the farmhouse all around on the block work aren't you yeah um, and on the top now if you're doing part partaging 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 or any other design any other thing on there how, how long do you get till it sort of starts setting on the actual what, stone this, work this one yeah so if you're using it well straight away as soon as you put it on it's carbonate right so it's wanting to go off but we we try and retard that stop that happening with water so we keep water and it keep the hessian which is over there over the top of it keep that wet and that slows it down and we want it to dry as slow as possible because this material when it's mixed up and i'll show you quickly when i've done that it's very uh it's very sticky and flexible it's lovely it's uh, it's just bionic i call this stuff it's fantastic will you let me because i've done which they'll see in the video i've done the pointing just inside down the edges haven't i which you yeah, we'll have a look um, yeah. um and you obviously using that type of mortar is different but using this one i could feel straight away the difference you can feel the stickiness yes yeah, totally different. and i thought that's going to be nice to use i'm um, looking forward and a lot of people don't use it because it's a faff it's a lot of work to make this uh but at the end of the day it's the right stuff it's the best stuff it's best for, best for your building it's the best ever you're ever going to and longevity get. isn't it that's so what let's we've without going too far into this that's the material once i mix it up i'll get you back and i'll quickly show you its mix and stickiness and then that's going to start the plastering process right what we're going to do as well if i take that off your trace if we yep. can come around and see what you've done here if you go in there try to explain what you've been doing excuse my uncomfy we look i've just while you were away I've just filled all of this, pointed, pointed this, there. and I don't know if you can see around there, go around through yep, there. Yeah, there you go. It was so nice to be doing proper pointing again. So Tracy's been pointing all the edges in. Don't worry about the mess on the uh, on the okay. woodwork, that just wipes off, it's only residue. Um, and, and then... Also down this side as well. So it just neatens it off, doesn't That's it. it? It's lovely. And then that side, that'll be a bit more a lovely for you job. to see. Well, you're good at it now, aren't you? So oh, I love it. You love really. pointing and that. So. I like it as much as crocheting, yeah. and that is saying so. <laughs> it's, that's looking great. Thanks. It's looking nice, isn't it? The other thanks. thing is, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean thanks because you saved me a job there. Oh, I've sent you the bill. <laughs> um, so what I did is I uh, cemented the uh, the ridges in. So if you look up there, you can see where I've done the little trim underneath there. And then I've painted the front of the lime that I filled back on the uh, on the ridges. Okay, so if we come over, here, you can see where the ridges have been limed, set into, and all the flashing's been uh, backfilled behind with uh, lime, and it's all nice and tight now. Okay, and then what I had left over, I just bunged on the wall. But basically, once we take the scaffold down, once I do the top bit, tomorrow we'll take the scaffold down, and then we're gonna I'm gonna start. Uh, plaster in the bottom and then once you've glazed but the job today is up there once you've glazed all the sashes i'll finish off the oiling so and then that will they'll be all in situ then that and uh you've cool. been doing great up on the potage as well yeah, haven't we'll you show them later um on the potage we'll go up That's there looking totally different yeah and also the ceiling in the front room is yeah. finished i couldn't actually film that that was really difficult i just it was difficult for me to keep the camera on and up and down the ladder so there's been a lot going on. It's an awkward thing to film, Trey. Yeah, definitely. But I think, well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited about going up on the potter today because it's oh, some it's lovely stuff you've and been the growing. Pumpkins. The onions and the garlics are coming off like nobody's business. The uh, courgettes. What, courgettes, we've been having courgette for everything. Like Mince, that, some of them. meat in the courgettes and everything, haven't yeah, we? It's been well, brilliant. We're off to a barbecue, aren't we? So I'm going to be making courgette with, Caj with Cajun chicken and a marinade on kebabs and also courgette slices which i will be showing in an up-and-coming cooking video um with a like an olive oil mix and also with um halloum halloumi cheese lovely put them on screen sounds lovely so. um i'm looking forward to that as well yeah, so nice. join us back soon and uh we'll uh, we'll show you the mix as it's mixed and then after that we'll get up on the potage okay so uh i've got the mix mixed up 
you'll find when you have a hot mix you have to mix it leave it for about 10 or 15 minutes because it's still hot and as it's starting to cool you'll add a little bit more water until you get the consistency you want so if you look in here trace okay this is a plastering consistency it's going to be a tad more water going into that but you can see how sticky this stuff is how it stays on the trowel and it's really got a lovely texture to it so it's the same concept as when it you're like doing sticks all over the tray you can see it's that it does like if that was cemented it just go and slide straight off so same right. concept as when you're doing pointing you turn your trail upside down if it sticks then you know the mix is yeah yeah right yeah, yeah. the thing is is with that stuff it will work at the beginning but it won't stay sticky all the way through the process that's your uh, 3.5 you're talking about yeah yeah right so three point nhl or natural hydraulic lime 3.5 it's not like this it doesn't stick like this though. the other one does stick but nothing like this no. this is fantastic it's fantastic for plastering it's, it's it's heavy look i mean i've got a big lump there and it's just staying on the trowel perfect right you can plaster upside down with this stuff it's brilliant um it's still a bit warm so we're gonna let it cool down a little bit more we're gonna have a quick cup of tea and then I'm going to start. I'm going to put a tad more water with this, and then I'm going to start plasting, getting ready to parge it. put all this on tray I'm going to show you a little technique we're going to be using this is that tool I made up yeah. okie cokey so what I do is I put it in the corner I pull it and I do it a couple of times okay it's not this low it's too low there so I just grab a bit of gear Okay, and then I'll come back the other way. Same technique, isn't it, they used to use on the Grecian temples? Sort of, yeah, they would have built up like this. Uh, these are just techniques I've picked up from plasters in conservation good plasters I'm yeah. talking not like you know to modern plasters and stuff the ones who've done all the old stuff um, so let me just bring it up here and I'll show you so it gives this effect okay so it creates a bead on the edge for us to finish that edge nicely to the wood all this wood will be wiped down after when it's dry uh, and also it frames it so when I put the parge in I'm going to parge it in here a nice flirty lee in the center so i've just got to drop a line down the center of this from this point here drop a line down and then that will be my center line and i'll work off of that but you'll see that as it comes along so the beauty of being our stickies yeah makes it more um, a lot more pliable doesn't it as well, well yeah it's pliable but it's uh what you've got to do is you've got to, sorry about that, cracked up, uh, so you've got to get it on there and then you can start to make the shapes like this, you know, put down here, I ain't going to do it yet. So you're building it up are you? Yeah. building it up. And as you can see that's the fleur de lis I've drawn, so I've freehand drawn that, okay? Yep, I can see that. And then I'll build that up, build all this out, yeah, and that's called parge. Um, lovely. You know, it's just something I've always been interested in. Uh, never done a lot, but it's uh, it's and satisfying, this is, like you know. This is like an artist's palette living in this French farmhouse. Oh yeah, and that's why it's never going to get done. <laughs> <laughs> Things are going to take so long to do, but they're going to be worth it because they're going to be here long before, well, long yeah. after we've gone. So. But you can see what I'm doing, I'm just building that out now, I'm going to do that all the way down. 
okay it's lovely and sticky it's going to stick on there but this is going to take a while quite a long time to dry i'm just following the outline of my drawing i've done on there very very clever okay. you can actually see well anyone who would know a little bit i can actually see how sticky that really is yep you can see how it comes out now yeah, yeah. it's like an embossment isn't it it embosses the well yeah you're building it away from the plaster so i've done this plaster you can see the beads i put in all the way around so you can see a bead i've put all the way around with my tool i made let me show you yep so you've done that all down so that's the why i made this tool okay and also it's going to be made for uh, it's going to be working downstairs as well but uh if you leave me to it for a while an hour or so i'm going to get all this on okay start shaping it and then once we've finished because they've seen basically how I put it on. Once I finish this, then we'll do some pictures of that. And that's our homage to uh, France. Lovely, which is good, English, isn't it? English made porch by an Englishman, but with, with a French style. French oak and use re recycling French materials as using, well. Yeah, that's it, using French oak, which is beautiful in itself. So they say it's a marriage of Francais and Anglais. Yeah. And a beautiful we're always marriage. at war with each other, but it's now we're at uh, harmony with each I'm other. I'm sure they love us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, so there we go. Finished the plastering. Done the uh, parging. You can see how it sticks out. Okay. Nice effect. It's a fleur de lis. Done the beading around the edging, all the way round, and on the arch as well on the bottom. Um, just going to wait for it to go off tomorrow and then give it a nice brush down just to smooth it out a little bit more uh, but there you go those of you who've been waiting to see the uh, parging done that's that part the uh, ridge tiles are also set into uh, lime plaster uh, sorry lime mortar uh, and the edging's done so take the scaffold down now I have to have another good clear up, clean up, wipe down, wash down the tiles and everything. And then uh, we can take the scaffold down and start working down below now. But this is a bit of white residue on the tiles, that'll wash off. It's just uh, where you wet the uh, roof and that. Um, but uh, pleased with that. So that's our little homage to France. A fleur de lis to tie it all in. Uh, You'll see these overhangs on the beads, which are these under here. Okay, these are these mouldings I've put on here. If you can see that. Um, and that's just to give us a seal between there and the tile of the roof. Uh, but I won't cut them off at the ends until I've got the fascias and soffits on. I've got a little bit of clearing up to do on this uh, edge of the arch. Clean that all down. And then the next job on there is to give that a colour. It's going to be a very subtle colour, but it's going to be in a lime wash, uh, just to highlight that a bit more, that fleur de lis. But I'll take you downstairs, give you a quick uh, view from down there. So bear with me, I'm going down the ladder. You're going to be looking at a wall now. <laughs> um, so hopefully you can see that. There we go. So I've got that pretty much centre of that, well it is centre of that, drop down a plumb line. And uh, that looks very nice, I must say. Not that I'm, a, I'm not a parger or nothing, it's just a, I could do it in wood I suppose, carve it, but um, it's a new technique for me as well. Uh, but I've enjoyed doing it, and like learning as well, so tell me what you think. And tell me, honey, will we go far? Listen, baby, don't break my heart. Yeah, this road is long ahead Yeah, this road is long ahead 
take it slow la da Bonjour everyone, bienvenue um, to mine and Budo's beautiful potager. I just absolutely love it. I come up here just to pick some things and then Budo's like, where are you? You've been about half an hour, what have you been doing? But <laughs> look, these are my spring onions. I have been picking lots, but they are just yummy, aren't they? They're so yeah. sweet. They've gone a little bit big, but I'm using them for salads and also for cooking as well. And they are they are lovely and sweet, aren't they? Very nice oniony, but on. sweet. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. No, you can them, let them go, can't you? Yeah, I got them when they were spring onions, um, but now obviously they've got a bit bigger. But I've been giving a lot away to our neighbours and everyone, yeah, and yeah. everyone loves it. But let me just give you a little tour of my potager. Uh, uh, potager. Our potager. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I it's yours that. really. Go on anyway, don't worry about it. <laughs> but look at the leaves. Look! Are they beautiful? Well, they come up so quick, haven't they? Yep. I actually did plant these a little bit earlier, but I use leeks in a lot of dishes, so they're not going to go to waste, are they? Oh, Budo, do you want one? Oh, let's have a raspberry. My gloves are clean. So... Hayden and Bella, our grandchildren that came, they were... Raspberry, excuse my lime hands. <laughs> oh, mm. wow. I actually picked one the other oh. day. Got, oh, I've got to have another one. At the top there, no? Look, at the top there, Trey. We yeah. just had there, yeah, just under that. Look, see it? Oh, yeah. Um, I picked a few the other day and there was actually a big hornet. So you have there to you go, look. Very careful. Nice. Here, look some more here. Now you see me, now you don't. Mm. Mm. Look, anyway, let's go on. There's leeks in there as well. Right. We could eat all them, couldn't we? <laughs> Follow me. These are our fruit bushes. We've been taking stuff off these, haven't they? But I must say, they have had quite a batter in because we had heavy rain for a whole week and strong winds as well. Yeah, right. So, obviously, look, they need to be... A lot of stuff was it. flattened and uh, yeah. pulled back up. Um, this one has to come back up again yep, so and uh, we had the sunflowers over didn't we a little bit some of them now they're pulled up again yeah one of them broke but i thought i tied them back earlier in anticipation mm -hmm. so we've got some red onions here trace yep red onions i'm picking them already um which i'll show you a bit later i've got them hanging up dry with the white onions and also loads of potatoes shallots now. yeah the shallots they're doing okay they're finished now aren't they yeah, they're, they're going to be coming up very soon. Yep. And obviously here, we have um, Swiss chard, which is, is... The white one, yep. Yep. That's lovely, isn't it? So I'll be using that in a substitute for like a cabbage or maybe a spinach when I do my curries. But look at this, the porridge, the bees love it. We only planted that for the bees, really, yeah. didn't we? Well, you can make tea out of it, but look. Tea, yeah. borage tea, yeah, but you can see the bees on this sometimes and they're just smothered. And they love the it. The colour of the flowers. They like the sunflowers as well, don't Beautiful. they? Beautiful. And come and look at this food. I don't know if I showed you. Oh. Can you see? The. Oh. Parsnip. Parsnips. So we've got the parsnips here. Look. So for our first year in the garden, we're doing really well. This is an experiment because this is totally different to what we're used to growing back in the UK. So yeah. there's things that I will do different. And obviously once you get my um, polytunnel built. Yep. Hint, hint. No, uh, I don't actually no, pester you. No, it's going to be you. next year. I, I don't actually pester you at all. No, no, you don't, no. Um, but I've just noticed something. We? I didn't know big oranges grew on the ground. They're pumped. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. Look. <laughs> I actually had 26, but what I've done is followed the secondary vine because you have to make sure they're 10 to 15 feet long before you cut them. So there was 26 
and now I think I've counted 11 which is plenty because otherwise all the energy gets put to the little ones and not yeah. to the big ones. So you're trying to make a couple of good ones for the autumn yeah? But look, no, yeah. there's about, I don't know. So look, look at these bad boys. And it's only August. Yeah, I'll give you a comparison. We'll put your hand there Trey and you can get an idea of the size of them already. That's only August. And I've put oak chippings underneath but we're picking up some bales aren't we in the Just next four. Just over there. You can see them boom go if you stand on here. Yep. Look, there's another another big one through there. Through there. Wow. And another one behind you there, look. I wonder if they do any championships You could look at that next year trying to grow the giant ones. But I see some uh, courgettes. We've been eating courgettes like they're going out of fashion. <laughs> Yeah, but they here. absolutely took off. They loved it here, and uh, <laughs> thank you, Sandra, for giving me the five plants. <laughs> Look, and it's that Budo gold, I think, that black gold. Oh my god, come here. Look at the size of these, right? <laughs> They're like marrows, but they are lovely when Tracy does her dishes with them. There's another one here. Look, look. Wow, look at the size of that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, look. Getting excited. Oh my god, don't get too excited, Trace. <laughs> it's the big one, look. Wow, that's gonna be stuffed, I think, for stuff it, yeah, with mince, mince meat and that. And... Oh uh, look, wow, these have just trebled. Yeah, they've gone over really but too I'm big, haven't they? But top of my fridge is full of cars. <laughs> <laughs> that's gotta be the biggest cause yet I've ever seen. What do they call it in America? I'm not sure if it if correct us, is it a marrow? No, it's but a... Bobby thinks it's a they call courgette. Oh, zucchini. Zucchinis, that's it. Zucchinis. No, and Australians do as well. And Aussies, yeah. Wow. Oh, and God. remember, I've been picking again. Anyway, what if we don't eat goes in the compost. But hand my favourites. Beetroot. Talk about them. They're all going um, really well. So, look, I've got... I've just planted a whole... Oh, no, hang on. Let me show you a better one. No, round here. Come here. There are some big ones here. Oh yeah, look. So yeah. I've planted them in a big bunch, and then what I'll do is, as they grow and be at the right size to yeah. pick and pickle, then the others will have that. Oh, one lovely, one lovely texture they got, and they uh, they push themselves out, don't they? They push one out, push one out. You take the biggest one, and then so on and so forth. Yeah, Brussels sprouts. Oh yeah. So it's looking wonderful, Trace. Yeah. You've done a grand job, and. We can get some more seeds in now to finish off the year. And I'll shut and look. And these are the little ones that I picked because. Compost them. Yep. But um, these are all potatoes, which I'll show you after. I've got them in a dark place, in boxes, netting bags, and all my onions are up. These are all rhubarb. Rhubarb's gone mad from little tiny plants. And remember, all this stuff here from the last time we showed this yeah. was only about four or five weeks ago, yep. six weeks maybe. Yep. So you're getting an idea how everything's really grown well here. Look at, and look at the sunflowers. And the sunflowers it's are beautiful. So beautiful. They're all facing the sun side, so you won't see the beauty of them, but you will in a little still uh, video I do for you. The, the bees are loving that. And this is more potatoes. What I have to in do the pots. here is they had a slight tanning on the leaves now i weren't 100 percent sure if it was potato blight so i know that once you get that you're best to just cut all the potato stems down to the ground level and then you leave them in the bucket for no more than three weeks but they won't grow any bigger but i've already they're in a storage a space aren't they yeah and they, they're nice size and do you so. think that was due to the rain all the rain we had well we had torrential rain then it was windy then it was sunny then like now i'll be watering again yeah. everything will dry out so i think it is that because i've spoken to a couple of other people and they've had that problem as well yeah. so it's well let's go down to the uh, where you've got young and stored yeah. and show them that all right so hello welcome to my storage cupboard where i keep all of my potatoes yeah, lovely and in here budo nice to try the onions smell lovely yeah. Yep. So we've got some potatoes. They're a little bit small this year, but we took them before the blight did get them. If we yeah, think but it's there, blight, there are some nice sized ones. Um, and these are my white onions so far, and the red onions, and yeah. they're absolutely delicious. We're eating them. They are delicious, and even the potatoes are lovely as well, aren't they? Yep. Yeah, and I've also and I've roasted with them. They, you just got to roast them for a bit longer because 
you know you use what you've got you don't go out yeah, and buy yeah. a particular potato and then above here which is a bit awkward we can't get there at the moment because you've got the sashes there is tons well, of as garlic. much as that as more more of garlic and garlics there? so we're, we're we're in for the whole year of garlic onion and potatoes uh probably leeks as well and beetroots beet and parsnips parsnips and also we've got swiss chard i yeah. can make some tea from the borage so everything that i've grown will be used in abundance in. and i'll be making lots of soups as well and that's that's the key to this uh me and tracy Hi. being here Cheers. is that we want to uh be a little bit self-sustaining and uh, grow our own food and this is the first year a little practice but we'll really get it right next year and uh, get you know uh, make as much as we need um, and once we get the chickens and the other guinea fowls and all the birds we want to get uh, chickens uh, geese and that <coughs> and we will be eating some of them they're not going to be pets yeah. so you know we'll uh, we'll, we'll be self-sustaining in food as well I've started with all the fruit as well yep yeah, I've started already um, I because I found that the spinach now three times I've grown it and it's bolting too quick we have got spinach off the early plants but I've now dried from the first batch um, a load of spinach seeds so we won't be buying spinach next year and I've left another load in to seed as well Brilliant. and the same with the onions so well it's all about saving everything and not growing something you don't want to be going out and buying seeds do you no. You need to leave plants in the ground and take the seeds from them and then it's not costing you any money is it well okay so <coughs> we'll wrap up it in now this video yeah yeah this will be the end of this video um and join us next week or the week after uh we haven't been making videos all the time because Just we busy. are busy and uh you know it takes up a lot of time youtube so we are making videos as and when yeah. we'll try and keep on schedule with one a week but sometimes you'll see us none for a two week or two or. all right yeah. but anyway guys thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next one, one.